I'm very proud that the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace will launch our sixth global center in New Delhi soon. Um, when Andrew Carnegie, a very prominent American businessman and philanthropist, founded the Carnegie Endowment more than a century ago, um, he encountered a world in the midst of profound transition, a world of rising powers, a world of massive global economic change, a world in which technology was transforming not only the economy, but the way in which people and societies and governments interacted with one another. Carnegie's purpose was very straightforward. It was to try to build international understanding and contribute to advancing international peace. And he had very much in mind Carnegie as a global institution, not an institution focused on American perspectives, but one which would bring to bear perspectives from around the world. A century later, um, obviously, those principal purposes are still very much a work in progress. Um, the international system faces huge challenges in conflicts, in, in many different kinds of changes. A century later, we also see a world which features the rise of new powers, massive global economic changes, and very important and transformative uh, consequences of technology. One of the most important features, I think, of that world and of that landscape is the rise of India a country which is going to have enormous impact on all of those different kind of changes in the world. And a relationship between India and the United States, which is unique in many respects, a partnership built on the fact that India and the United States are today the world's two largest democracies, two of the world's largest economies, and really for the first time in history have a stake in each other's success. So when we open, when we launch our center in New Delhi shortly, what we intend is to create an Indian institution led by a very prominent Indian strategist, Raja Mohan, staffed by the most promising young uh, Indian scholars and practitioners that we can find in fields like the political economy of reform, India's foreign and national security policy, and the way in which technological innovation can matter to both of those first two areas with a real focus on the next generation, which really holds enormous promise, I think, for India. And we have, consistent with Andrew Carnegie's original vision, very much in mind Carnegie India as a part of a global institution. So the, our other existing centers in Beirut and Brussels and Moscow, Beijing and Washington can benefit from Indian perspectives generated by Carnegie India and where Carnegie India and hopefully Indian society and Indian governance can benefit from the perspectives that get offered not just from Washington, but also from all of those other centers as well. So as you can tell, I'm quite excited about what's possible for Carnegie India, what's possible for Carnegie as an institution as we move into our second century of existence, because I think the original purpose and animating force of Andrew Carnegie is as important today as it was over a century ago. And I'm convinced that Carnegie India can make an enormously important contribution to that effort.